Hey Tommy, what do you think is better off-road? An old Land Rover or a new Lexus? What a question. Yeah, it's a loaded question because in this review we're taking a look at the brand new Lexus GX 460 and we're comparing it to our old 15 year older Land Rover LR3. Now you may think the two don't compete, but you'll be surprised. That they don't compete? No, they're very similar in terms of their tech and really this review is all about finding out whether the new tech on the Lexus can actually keep up with the old tech on the Land Rover. So let's get right to it. Come on, figure it out. I'm starting in just your normal driving around mode, center diff unlocked, no special programs. But as we start going up higher, I think I'm gonna to have to start engaging some of the, some of the off-road goodies. So tell me, two questions for you. Why are we taking a vehicle, the GX460, that most people take to the mall on a pretty difficult off-road trail? Right, two things. Yeah. First of all, this is secretly a Land Cruiser. Okay. And second of all, <laughs> this 2020 model has something called the off-road package. Oh my, what is an off-road package doing on a Lexus? Hi, this is Roman from TFL, and I've got Case here to show off Avalon King's do-it-yourself ceramic coating. Inside the kit is everything you need to apply it to your car or truck. Just wrap the cloth around the foam pad, apply drops of Avalon King, and wipe it onto your vehicle. Buff it off after it dries, and you're done. Avalon King uses nanotechnology to seal all the pores on your vehicle's surface to form an invisible semi-permanent shield that can last two to three years. The coating produces a glass-like glossy finish on your vehicle's painted surfaces, headlights, rims, and glass. Better yet, it makes cleaning off dirt, mud, bugs, and other insults to your vehicle's paint a heck of a lot easier. It's like car wax on steroids. Get your own bottle and seed for yourself. Click on the link below and use the code FASTLANE25 to get $25 off. Now let's get back to our regular scheduled video. Well, like I said, it's secretly a Toyota Land Cruiser. Okay. And it has something called multi-terrain select, panoramic view monitors, a transmission cooler, a fuel tank protector, and crawl control with multi-terrain select. How much does all that cost? $1,500. Oh, and how much is this? cost when it's all packaged together in the Monroni. Yep, $72,000. So this is one expensive secret Land Cruiser. And we should explain what I mean by secret Land Cruiser. Abroad, this is sold as the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, yep. which is a proper body-on-frame off-roader. But here in the U.S., the Toyota Lexus gods deemed us unworthy of the Prado of the proper off-roader, so they gave us a much more luxurious, comfortable, secret off-roader. I see. Yeah. Uh, and let's face it, we're kind of being tongue-in-cheek, but a lot of people use these uh, to go overlanding. They use them for off-roading, especially when they get older, right? Not new ones, but especially when they get older, they use them because, let's face it, in America, Land Cruisers are very expensive, even <laughs> used. Yeah. And so basically, uh, this has become the well, I, I, I wouldn't say poor man's Land Cruiser, but let's say every man's Land Cruiser when it's 10 years old. Yeah, and these go everywhere you point them. So these are amazing vehicles for crossing large stretches of country off-road. And for 2020, it's been updated with some cool new improvements. Lexus has really taken the buttons and off-road tech to the extreme in this 2020 GX. I mean, this set of switches looks like mission control down here. First of all, I've got a button for low range, so I put the truck in neutral and pull that down, engage the low range transfer case. Once I'm in low range, I've got a switch here for multi-terrain select, and I have five different settings depending on the terrain I'm driving over. And then if I push this button here, it engages crawl control, which is like super slow off-road cruise control, which will apparently get me over anything I point the Lexus at. And then on the top row, I have my 
my air suspension control. So I've got a button to raise and lower the suspension and then one here to adjust the hardness and the softness of the actual dampers. And if that wasn't enough, here I've got a button to lock the center diff and I even have a button to engage different off-road views. So I've got side cameras, front cameras, there's even an underside camera that's available. Whew. Man, that's a lot of stuff to get right and a lot of different things to play with on the trail. Yeah, but it is missing some things that I'd like to see in a dedicated off-roader and that is like good tires. Yep, it, it's it, missing good tires. Yeah, and maybe a rear diff lock would be nice as well and you know, pretty good approach and departure angles. And look at the front of this thing, it's pretty much got a chin that sticks straight out, right? Instead of straight up. Oh, that's my biggest frustration with these Lexus off-roaders. Yeah. This, the GX and the bigger LX, yeah. they have the tech, they have the build quality, yeah. but because they're Lexuses yeah. and that's synonymous with, you know, style and luxury, yeah. they put on these really low hanging side steps and these really pretty front ends. Just, if you're going to do an off-road package, give me a big meaty skid plate in the front. Right? Something I can bash into. I don't want this pretty little chin spoiler thing with fog lights. I want something more aggressive. Let's face it, you know, these two cars, if they were new, would compete. Yeah. The, up the Land Rover pretty Land much, price-wise, exactly. Yeah. They were all three-row. The Land Rover in yeah. front of us is bigger. Yeah. So this weighs about 5,100 pounds. That's 5,400 pounds. Right. Uh, they both actually have pretty similar V8s. Yep. So this is a 4.6 liter V8 with 301 horsepower. Yep. That's got a 4.4 V8 with 300 horsepower. Yeah, so in, in a lot of ways, we're matching them up, or in this case, mashing them up, because we always get the comment, why are you guys comparing two vehicles that don't compete well? If that were new or if this were old, they would compete. So now we are in the LR3, affectionately known as Rhino because the air suspension snorts every time it goes up or down. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty and funny. It's got a low range just like the Lexus. It's got air suspension just like the Lexus. It's got terrain management just like the Lexus. It's actually even the same color. It is the same color. There are some pretty significant differences. Yeah, we've got a snorkel. Yeah, well that's not what I was, not what I was going for. <laughs> the uh, rear suspension in this is fully independent. Yep. That's kind of a big deal. And that's pretty much the biggest difference. <laughs> and the snorkel. No, there's, there's a bunch of differences. Yes. And the ladder in the back. Oh, she's dead. What a mess. And the bull bar. Yes, to get it. Yes. So this is slightly, <laughs> slightly modified. I think the ride is smoother in this. Yeah, I think it is a little bit smoother because it's a little bit heavier. I also think it's got a little bit more ground clearance at its highest height. Yep, well, I think part of the other reason is it's, it's got kind of bigger tires, right? They're more yeah. balloon-like and smaller wheels. Yeah, yeah, so we also have more off-road tires on. Uh, but they both have a really good ride. But you're right, this one this one more or less demolishes the ground, whereas that one goes over the ground. No, <laughs> that's right. The one thing that Lexus slash Toyota does have going over the Land Rover, and I know you guys out there are screaming about this, is reliability, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, in most surveys, and even through anecdotal evidence, the chances of that Lexus outlasting this Land Rover are pretty significant. I agree, yes. Yeah, it's hard to refute that. The Achilles heel on these are the air suspensions. Yeah, but they always fail no they, matter what car you have. Yeah, I mean... Eventually, given enough time, the seals fail, the pumps fail, it all fails. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. but that's the, kind of the one area that would fail prematurely in an LR3. But you fix that, and these things will go a couple hundred thousand miles with not too much difficulty. In the LR3, we have a number of different controls as well, but it's a lot simpler than in the Lexus. So I've got a paddle here that engages low range. That's easy to do. And then I've got another paddle which will raise the suspension up uh, from high mode to standard mode and even an axis mode. So that's pretty similar to the Lexus. I then have this old school plastic knob to control the different terrain response programs. So I've got a uh, grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, and even a rock crawl setting and then a hill descent control button. Uh, that pretty much does it, I think. Now, if this was not a poverty spec model SE LR3 here in the US, we would have a screen up here which would show you where the power was being directed and a bunch of different angles. This one does not have it because the owner did not spend enough money, so instead we just have this little kind of cheapy screen here in the middle. 
Oh, no cameras. There are no cameras in here. So I'm gonna have to do it old school by just dangling out the window <laughs> to see what I'm gonna hit. So here's the deal guys. We have had the most snow ever in the history of Boulder this year. In the last week, we got about, well, 30 inches of new snow. And uh, snow and off-roading don't really mix because it's a great way to roll a vehicle or hurt yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Land Rover up here first, and that way, if we break it, we're breaking our own thing instead of Toyota's $72,000 Lexus. All right, here comes Tommy. All right, here we go up the ironclads in the Land Rover LR3. Now I'm starting out in normal mode, so high range, uh, no special programs. Yep, we're just in normal mode. I love these trucks. First of all, they look brilliant. They're super comfortable. They are huge, which means they hold a lot of stuff. And they are dirt cheap. <laughs> of course, maybe for a reason, but LR3 seem to be pretty solid. Now we're coming up to our first ledge and I think I'm going to have to raise the suspension and select low range. Yeah, for sure. Um, low range. This is where the fun stuff begins. I can push all sorts of buttons. Okay. Off-road height on the suspension selected. There it goes. It's lifting up. Now this Land Rover does have a two inch lift rod installed, which means it sits a little bit higher than stock. So Tommy is in on-road height right now, which is actually tall enough to make it up the first step, but he's going to jack up the Land Rover into off-road height. He's doing it right now to get even more ground clearance. Okay, so we are in low range, and I'm going to select a program. Grass, gravel, snow. That sounds good. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Oh yeah, that's great. So what's happening is it's using the brakes to distribute power and torque to where they need to go. Not bad at all, and you were able to crawl up there with plenty of ground clearance to spare. All right, Razor Rocks, super sharp rocks, open diffs, not a good combination when you add snow into the mix. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Now, there was an off-road package available for the LR3, which gave you a locking rear diff. This one does not have it. There it goes, though. Come on, figure it out. There you go. So the traction control does take some time on these older rigs, but it did figure it out. That was pretty good. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm not sure the Toyota can do that, uh, Lexus. But yeah, that was uh, that was about approach, brake over, and departure angle, and tires. Now. Tires, of course, are very important when it comes to off-roading, and our Land Rover has dedicated off-road tires. They're Nitto tear grapplers, whereas the Lexus has all-season Dunlops. Now, you may be wondering, that's not fair. You've got off-road tires versus all-season tires, but this is the tire that Lexus provided, and it's a tire we're not allowed to change. try to keep a little bit of momentum and I'm more worried about sliding all the way back down than actually getting up so let's see here oh it's a good test of the traction control because it's clawing at the surface Any control, Tommy? I got a little bit. All right, truth or dare? I gotta tell you, they both look pretty ugly. Truth has some grip. I mean, that snow is melted off. Dare is all snow. I don't know. What do you think? Eh, go for dare. You can always back down, huh? Okay. Look to the floor. Let me give it a little bump. Look to 
the floor. Come on, Land Rover. Rev, why aren't you revving? Come on, Rev. You're lowering. You should just be going crazy right now. Ah! Try this first gear. Maybe that's why you wouldn't rev. That's a little bit better, actually. All right. So in first gear, if I manually select it, it will actually allow me to get some RPM up. How do I want to make this turn? Now that is impressive. The Land Rover went up the harder side than the Razor. That's pretty crazy. Uh, and they both made it to the top. Now the question is, can Tommy turn around and actually make it back down without rolling it? Come on, come on, Land Rover. Don't slide down the mountain. Oh. Let's turn on hill descent control. See how that works. Ooh, that seems to work really well. All right, so I, coming up the hill, I was in snow mode, which I think was the wrong mode because it was definitely fighting the throttle. I was all the way down and it wouldn't let me get any revs up. Um, so maybe I should have been in like mud or ruts, although with the snow I thought that would have been the best program. Ooh, it's definitely uh, sliding around pretty good. <laughs> nice work, Tommy. You went up the harder side than the Razor. Yeah, it wouldn't let me, I was in the snow mode, yeah. which we were in snow, yeah. uh, but it wouldn't let me get any RPM up. So I'm thinking I should have been in a different mode, but it made it up. All right, let's go get the Lexus and see if we can even get this far. Yeah, let's see. Now I know style may not seem like a very important off-road trait, but in some ways it is because it may determine how much chrome you leave out on the trail. And if you look at the Land Rover, everything is very tucked up, everything is curved toward the underside so that there's not a lot of bodywork hanging down to scrape on stuff. Now the Lexus does have a lot of bodywork hanging down. Look at the front, it's very low, it's very sports car-like. That is not what you want off-road. Lexus's approach seems to be that with the grill they hope to eat the competition alive because certainly with that low splitter it doesn't help much with approach angle. All right here comes Tommy in the Lexus and I gotta tell you I'm really nervous about this one. We don't own this car and we get a lot of comments from you guys like well why don't you you know drive it up into a tree and we don't own it. We have to take care of it like it's somebody else's. I'm starting in just your normal driving around mode, center diff unlocked, no special programs. But as we start going up higher, I think I'm gonna have to start engaging some of the, some of the off-road goodies. Now we're coming up to these steps here. Let's see, uh, let's see what's going on. Let me put the windows down so I can hear my spotter. Am I gonna clear this one? We're good. All right. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, stop, 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 can you jack it up? Yeah, okay, so, right now you're gonna hit. let's go into low range, let's go into the high suspension on the air suspension, high setting I should say, I'm gonna go into crawl control too, slow, 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 stop, you're gonna, you're gonna tear off the chin. What the heck? Come look. I mean, we'll tear the chin off, dude. Look at this. I mean, that'll just tear right off. Can I go left or right? No. It's gonna... Unless unless we actually put something under the wheel. I could put a rock or something under there, and then you could potentially do it. You want to try, or should we just? You do it. It's a, it's. No one's gonna do this with their seventy-two thousand dollar Lexus. I don't right. want to. I don't want to have that call with. Uh, Toyota Lexus, you know, they give us a lot of great cars and I don't want to explain to them why we tore the nose, their spindle nose or their predator nose. I mean, there's no way, look. So Lexus does, did do a concept of this called the GXOR, do you yeah, remember that? I remember. I wish they'd send us that, that'd be cool. All right, well that was disappointing. I have no doubt that with a different front end, some better tires and a bit of a lift, this could go anywhere the Land Rover could go, but it's just disappointing that Lexus put such a low front end on such a great, capable off-roader. 
Uh, what are you gonna do? So we didn't want to just leave you hanging and not take the Lexus up the ironclad. So we're gonna try a real world snow slip test. Basically, Tommy has it in such a, such a position that the driver's side front wheel is in the air and the passenger side rear wheel is in the air. And we'll see if it can send power to the right wheel to actually get them up and over this gully. So you ready, Tommy? Yeah, so I'm gonna go into crawl control. That'll be the best way to do this, I think. Slow as crawl control, and then I just take my foot off the brake and it should do it for me. Are you ready? Yeah, go for it. Oh yeah. Look how good that works. Wow. Hey, back up and try it without crawl control. Just try it with your throttle. All right. Yeah, see what happens then. Go back, back straight. Okay, I'll tell you when you're in the air, keep going. Okay, right there, you're in the air. Oh yeah, stop. All right, this is gonna be, I have to choose a setting. I guess mud and sand. All right, here we go. Oh geez. You're sliding backward. Hey, it works. Yeah, it did. Looky there. So what we have here is a really competent vehicle with not enough approach angle. It's that simple. So if you guys buy one of these, you're going to have to get yourself some kind of a different front bumper that allows you to actually use this vehicle's full capabilities because, yeah, it's good. It's just too urban right now. All right, well, let, let's see how uh, the Land Rover does compared to the Lexus. Same test, better tires, more ground clearance. Okay, so same thing in the Land Rover now. I did kind of the mud setting in the Lexus, so I'll do the mud and rut setting in the Land Rover. Still low range. Here we go. Accelerating. That works pretty good too. I'll try it again. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay. Keep going a little farther. Keep going. Grip. All right. Let me try a different mode. Let me go into rock mode. That should be the most aggressive. Rock crawl selected. Are you ready? Yep, there we go. There it goes. Just took longer to figure it out. Yeah, I think that one just has a lot more articulation, which is weird, but because it's got more articulation, taller tires, better tires, it did really well. So Tommy, I think it would be fair to say that a 15-year-old Land Rover that costs about $6,000 is better off-road than a brand new $70,000 Lexus. Yeah, but not because it's actually any better off-road, but it's just that $5,000 is a lot easier to stomach when you end up crunching into a tree than 72 grand. So there you have it, you know, uh, the off-roader that is best is the off-roader that you're willing to break the most. As always, this is Roman and Tommy. Head over to TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car and truck reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.